Shalom and welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. Today we're looking at Jeremiah 8, 23. And uh, if you're reading the text from your Hebrew text, um, you will see that this is the last verse of chapter 8. If you're following along with an English translation as well, you'll see that this is actually considered to be chapter 9, verse 1. So there's a little difference in the numbering of the verses there. But this is actually the last verse in chapter 8. And once again, we're going to hear Jeremiah uh, bewailing uh, what is happening to the people. We just see his heart breaking over the judgment that's coming because of their stubbornness and refusal to listen to God's word. Let's go ahead and read these verse. Uh, read this verse in Hebrew as we get started. Mihitein roshi mayim ve'ayni mekor dima ve'evke yomam ve'layla et chalale bat ami. So we start off with this interrogative pronoun who who will give. This is just an imperfect. It's going to be a 3MS uh, Cal imperfect from our verb natan. You can see the nun in the dogish there assimilated that, which is the yod preformative. So literally what we have here, here is who will give. Now, th this is a Hebrew expression. Sometimes it means literally who will give something, but uh, oftentimes it expresses a strong, strong desire. Oh, that something might happen. Um, it's it w we would call if we're working in Greek or some other languages we would call this an optative, uh, a very strong wish. So who would give or oh that something might happen? And what is it that he wants to happen? Roshi, my head. You can see rosh with the pronoun suffix, first common singular. My head, mayim, waters. Oh, that my head were waters. We can supply the verb uh, to be there. So, but in a sort of an optative subjunctive. Oh, that my head were waters. And my eye, once again, ayin with I. There are a couple of manuscripts that actually have a, a pathak under here instead of a, the hieric right there. And if it were a pathak, it'd be my eyes. It'd be plural then. Um, and given, you know, that, that the, uh, it's just a change in the vowel points, uh, that's totally possible. And a lot of translations will translate it eyes. And my eyes, what, what we can translate it as a singular, and my eye, my Mekor in a miko is a noun which means uh, this is a spring. It comes from a, ver a verb, a kor, which means to dig. And a miko is a spring, something that's uh, been, been dug up, but gi giving water, something that's flowing forth water. And it's in construct here, a spring of dim'a. Now, dim'a is a noun which means tears. It's sort of a collective noun, even though it's a feminine singular. It has a collective idea of, of crying tears. Oh, that my eyes, uh, my eye were a spring of waters, a spring of tears. Um, and I will weep. Now, this vav that's being used here, it's not a vav consecutive, but it almost has this idea of explaining why, especially after this, this optative idea, who would do this? Because then I would be able to do something, is sort of the idea. And I will baka. And this is, this is a, a first common singular. Uh, this is an imperfect. I am P F imperfect, and it's the first common singular with this olive performative, and it's a cow, and it's from our verb baka, bait, with a calf and a hay, which means to weep. And I would weep. Uh, De yomam, this is from yam, but this is actually more of a, a noun actually being used as an adverb here, uh, by day and by night. So this phrase is very common to see these two words together. So I would weep day and night. And to weep over something, uh, very often the verb to weep has the takes its accusative, which, what it is you're weeping about, uh, will take an accusative, and so that's why we get this et marker here. Uh, weeping over what? Ha-chalele, the slain, and this is a noun which means pierced or slain. It's a plural construct you can see here, right there. So it'd be chalidim, but here it's the slain, and it's the slain because it's in construct with daughter, once again, this daughter of my people. We've seen this over the last several verses with this very tender idea. Jeremiah is, is, is concerned about his people. He loves them, although he's frustrated to death with their stubbornness at the same time. And he wishes here now that he could just weep over them. His compassion is is, is just bursting forth. Well, let's go ahead and hide our work here. It's quite a strong verse emotionally. Let's look at a couple of um, 
translations. There's not a lot of variation, but just a little bit. Most of our translations are going to be pretty straightforward. Oh, that my head were water, my eyes, so they take that as a, a plural there, a fount of tears, then would I weep. So taking this as a uh, sort of a, this is the reason, uh, this would be the consequence. Then I would be able to weep day and night for the slain of my poor people, for the daughter of my people, with this tender idea of daughter there. Um, the Christian Standard Bible, if my head were a flowing spring, my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night over the slain of my dear people. If my head, now they make this into a, a, just a simple if. Um, I feel find that to be a little bit weak for me yitain uh, because this seems to be more of an optive, a, a stronger desire. This is almost like, well, if this were the case, then I would, I would weep. But it, you know, but I, I was a little unhappy with that. I think if if you were to do something like the New Living Translation, they just added the word only, and I think that makes a, a huge difference here. Do you see what I mean? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears. This this picks up this optative idea of me attain. So even though even though the New Living is a uh, a paraphrase, I think they actually do a better job than the Christian Standard here. I wish they had put the word only up here. If only my head were a pool of water, my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. Jeremiah is deeply, deeply moved. This is going to continue as we move into chapter 9 in the Hebrew text as well. Uh, Jeremiah just uh, expressing his his brokenness and his grief over what's happened to his people. Oh, may the Lord give us a heart of compassion for, for those who are, who are suffering, even if sometimes the suffering is because of their own stubbornness and foolishness. Uh, the Lord looks uh, on them with judgment, but he also looks with compassion. And to be able to keep those two things in balance is, uh, really takes a lot of grace from the Lord. Lord himself. We'll check back with us soon as we begin uh, the English chapter uh, 9, the Hebrew chapter 9 as well, uh, in the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. Shalom.